morning, y'all. Rob the American here, and welcome to Tales of Manchester and Watches. All right, y'all, it's that time again. Time for another watch brow. And this time, <laughs> we're heading to the city of Leicester. So I hope you stick around. So I don't know anything about Leicester at all. And the only reason I'm heading there today is because a viewer of a previous video left me a uh, message saying, Rob, you should check out Leicester. There's a, there's a pretty good watch scene over there. So <laughs> that's why I'm heading out today. So I, I'm either going to thank him or blame him, but we always hope for the best. <laughs> so I'll see y'all when we get to Leicester. All right, folks, we have made it. Now, <laughs> we're, the plan for the day is to do a little sightseeing, of course, do some watch, <laughs> watch prowling, um, and I've done something that I've never done before. There is a local owned watch store called Stewart's Watches that's outside the city center that I contacted in advance because they've got a couple of brands that I've never seen before and he was super nice on the phone. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of the city center first, get some lunch, and then we'll probably take a cab out, out to his place. So, so yeah, let's get started. And we stepped into the Omega Boutique inside Lumber's Jewelers and had a look at this Speedmaster Moonwatch Professional. This is the two-tone Sedna Rose Gold and Stainless Steel, but this time they've just put it on a leather strap instead of the two-tone bracelet. It retails for 10,700 pounds or about 11,300 US dollars. And have a look at this beast. Oh, <laughs> this is the Seamaster Planet Ocean 6000M. It retails for 12,300 pounds or about 14,000 US dollars. <laughs> it's, it's 45 and a half millimeters case and a thickness of just over 18 millimeters. This has gone deeper than any other watch. And it's, there's, it's got a secret to it. If you put a UV light up to the dial, have a look at this. This thing is insane, but I love it.
All right, it's getting that time, y'all. You know how I work up an appetite when I'm doing these watch prowls. Now, unfortunately, and it's almost tragic, the Vietnamese place that I was searching for is closed today. But I found a substitute that we are going to be looking for. <laughs> you got to go to Plan B sometimes. That's what when life throws you throws, throws you these curves. All right, right next to the King Richard III is, look at this, Mr. Wang's hot pot. <laughs> Let's go on in. This is very interesting. So you basically pick the ingredients in your soup and you pick the base. Uh, whether you like it spicy or chicken base or beef or what, uh, whatever, and then they they fix the whole thing for you. So we will see. Hopefully, I picked the right ingredients. This could be a disaster, but as always, we keep hope alive. Look at that, y'all! Chinese hot pot. Wow, that's on fire. <laughs> Let's dig in. Jumped into a cab. Um, we're heading to Stewart's Watch Company, which I guess is a, it's a pretty good distance outside the city center, but hopefully it'll be worth it. We are in the Stony Gate neighborhood of Leicester, and right behind me is Stewart's Watch Company. All right, there we go. Uh, all right, y'all. I am in the showroom of Stewart's Watch Company, and sitting next to, to me is the owner, Robert Stewart. Robert, thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. Um, so how I've... We were, we were talking before we started filming, and how I came to be sitting here right now is when I decided to do a Lester um, Watch Prowl, I was Googling, and I found your shop online and I've done something that I've never done before which is go outside of city center because y'all carry some brands that I had never actually um, seen in person before so I was super excited and then I and then I called you I think I, I called you, you out of the blue yeah. what did you think when you hear this American <laughs> voice going hey can I come in your shop were you like uh oh <laughs> no, it was uh, it was a ni nice phone call to, to to receive. So yeah, it was. Uh, it, it, but you're right though. The shop is we're about two miles outside the city centre, um, and I suppose primarily the watch brands that I, I I sell are a little lesser known, smaller independents. Not necessarily the sort of brands that you ne you really need to be on a high street in the city centre for. You know, right, you, right. you get enthusiasts and collectors making a journey to come to see you really rather than just impulse purchases well it worked it worked on me because because here here i am right now and you were very kind and generous to, to to let me let me come in so hopefully this this will be worth you <laughs> worth your while and not a big fat waste of your time all right um some of the brand um we're going to look at some unusual brands that you don't that you as as robert said you don't you don't see anywhere else and the first brand that really caught my attention was Hanhart. Mm -hmm. um, Robert, can you kind of tell tell us about Hanhard and what that's about? Yep, so Hanhard are a German manufacturer. Um, they actually started in Switzerland, uh, but quite quickly moved to, um, to, uh, to Germany um, in the Black Forest region. And um, they're, I guess they're sort of best known for manufacturing uh, chronograph pieces and stopwatches. And one of the one of the models uh, has a, has a, a special story that you were telling me about. Would you sh would you share that again? Mm, yeah, sure. Uh, so so basically, um, uh, Hanhart currently only produce this um, black dial model uh, in 
a 42 and a 39 mil case size, but they only offer it currently in a with a standard um, chronograph manual wind movement. Okay. Um, I asked Hanhart if they could produce the 39 mil uh, case size with the all black dial and a flyback movement. Really? Okay. Um, because I kind of felt well, most people, most collectors would say that's the original 417 or I suppose the Steve McQueen. All right. So that was the watch he wore. It was a 39 mil um, black dial 417 with a with a flyback uh, wow. movement. So this is the one. This this has it basically. So it's, I suppose it's like a custom made piece. And they did it for you. Yeah. So they, I, I asked if they if they're able to do this. Wow. They said yeah, sure. I think they do it for another retailer based in Australia as well. Um, so it's not like it's unique to me only. But, but within the UK, certainly within the UK, yeah. That's, see, see, folks, you're dealing with we're dealing with important people here. We <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Are these these the thirty nines that these are the ones that thought what a what a perfect size. And they, can you tell us a little bit about these straps? Yeah. So this is uh, called a bun strap. So basically, it's just got this leather underlay that fits underneath the watch you can remove it really easily because all watches now have these quick release spring bars so you can just flip it off without any difficulty i would say it's a kind of a 50 50 split really whether you like it or you don't um, I, th I mean i think it looks super it cool looks, it looks really cool but not everybody finds the the height that it adds to all the right. watch quite to everyone's taste fair enough just just personally at least you at least you have you have options there yeah you can take it off and then you'll have this this one with a with a bigger dial and the tan strap. What's the story with this one? Uh, yeah, so that one is called the four one seven Moby Dick, and it became known as the Moby Dick because amongst collectors of Hanhart watches, it was a real rare beast back in the day when um, it was originally um, manufactured back in the nineteen fifties again. Okay. Um, so the white dial variants are really hard to find on the pre-owned market, the original white dial variants. So this one has just become known as the uh, the Moby Dick. And when, So is that among collectors it's known as Moby Dick, or is yeah. that the company calls it well, that? Well, it was originally amongst collectors that were calling it this, and Hanhart took that name and just... Uh, added it to this to this watch. Oh, right. like a really you might as well you might as well, might as well take yeah, exactly. take advantage of it. Yeah, right. yeah. So if you if you if you get a hold of Hanhart and you say Moby Dick, they'll know exactly exactly what <laughs> yeah. exactly what you're yeah, talking it's about. To do with a novel. And this limited edition tornado version came in too late for me to film, but Robert does have it in his store. If you want to pop a color on the dial, check this out. Another brand that y'all have is one that I hadn't heard of and you, you've you been telling me about. Can you tell us about this? Mm. Uh, so it's a company called Habring or Habring 2. It is two people, basically. Uh, it's Richard and Maria Habring. Um, and they're a tiny company based in Austria. Okay. They produce around two to three hundred watches in a year. So really? really That's small it. Production. Um, their kind of thing, I suppose, is they offer alternatives to a watch collector's um, box of watches. So okay. they, they produce complications that I suppose aren't commonly seen. Um, some would argue whether they even have a point like this one, but that's not really the point of Havering. Okay. It's to offer something that is completely different. Uh, and, and speaking of completely different, yeah. what's going on? What's going on over here yeah. with this with this sub sub yeah. uh, dial? Yeah, so it, it feels a little bit like you're in fast forward, doesn't it? So you've got this flashing sub dial that that, 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 that turns eighths of a second intervals, um, and then your standard running second hand, which sits in the center of the dial. Okay. Is called a deadbeat center second hand. Okay. So rather than sweep like a standard mechanical watch, it ticks like a quartz, but it is a manually wound mechanical movement. Wow. Um, 
it's, um, it's, it's, it's an in-house movement now. So Richard, a bit of a backstory on Richard Havering. He used to work for IWC back in the 90s. Okay. And he helped to develop the uh, IWC dot and chronograph movement. Really? So wow. It, it was basically a really heavily modified Vauju 7750 movement. And it was considered to be the first dot and chronograph movement that didn't break. Um, so it actually worked. Um, and so these, this couple, they, they know what they, they're, yeah, they've been in the business. He's got a proper pedigree, yeah. So he knows what he's doing. And um, yeah, they just like to make watches. That I suppose they're just a bit more unique, a bit different. Um, and this is another. This is another one of theirs. Yeah. So this one, um, it's kind of very similar, I suppose, to the to the, the other one that you just showed. But this one doesn't have the uh, the flashing subdial. This one's just got a deadbeat centre second hand. Wow, that's good looking. The design, though, is very much a sort of a pilot's watch, I suppose, like a 1940s era pilot's watch, Arabic numerals, black dial, uh, cathedral shaped hands. Right. Um, but so, uh, yeah, it's just kind of what it's got going on on the inside, which is quite different. And this is also a manual? Yeah, manual wind movement. And you see the center wheel. That's what's been stopped and released to create that wow. tick. Wow. That's very cool. Mm, really interesting. And Robert, one more brand that you've got really caught my eye. Can you can you talk a little bit about this? Uh, yeah, so uh, a Swiss brand called Olek and Weiss. Uh, Olek and Weiss? Yeah, so okay. it's two surnames basically. Started in the 1950s. Um, I would say that their heyday or their most popular period was during the 1960s. Really? They were one of the first brands to offer a, a mail order sales service so they would advertise oh, wow. within uh, magazines and um, you would send off for your watch and they would post it out um, they sold loads and loads of watches to uh, soldiers during the Vietnam War really because apparently their standard issue watch wasn't very reliable I don't know who it was actually who made it could have been Hamilton maybe I'm not sure okay but um, they, they advertised in a lot of these military uh, magazines right. that the soldiers would read and they would send off for these watches and um, yeah so they, they were they were selling a lot of watches back in the 1960s uh, all right Robert so what's the best way for someone to to get a hold of you and to check out some of these watches well first off they can come into the shop uh, I'm here Monday to Friday okay. 10 till 4 um, so yeah absolutely welcome to come in the shop's always set up it's not an appointment only okay. um, so you can just walk straight in um, obviously there's a website uh, everything's listed on there the website address is stewartswatches.co.uk so www.stewartswatches.co.uk yep and then your Instagram Instagram is stewarts underscore watch underscore co there you go. I'll I'll, I'll I'll leave all the information yeah. in the in the in the description description below. All right, listen, Robert. Thank you so much for for having me in. And listen, y'all, def, definitely, if you find yourself in Greater Leicester area, or, or like me, you go to Leic go to Leicester for this. Uh, it it will be well worth a visit because I personally, I don't know how you feel about. I know I know y'all are big. You do a lot of people ordering online. Yeah, for the most part, it's although I have a business uh, and a bricks and mortar business, right? You know, so much of it nowadays is mail order. But I never wanted to just be an online store. You know, I, I still like the old school. I, I, I'm with you 100. percent I like to, I personally like to see it on my watch, but I know I have lots of watch pals who who order without without hesitation. And so, by all means, um, give Robert a shout and, and definitely come on into this to the shop. It, it is well worth it. I'm I'm super excited. Listen, I really appreciate I appreciate you having having us in. Oh, that's thanks for coming. Thank you. All right, y'all. That's from me today. I've got a train to catch to get back to Manchester. Of course, we've got a huge thank you to Robert over at his Stewart's Watch Company for inviting us in uh, and showing us those super cool watches. So by all means, um, check out his website or come on into Leicester and, and go go over to his shop. He will he will look look after you very well and you all know the rule be sure and tell them that Rob the American sent you and if you enjoyed this video please give it a like and subscribe to my channel and by all means leave a comment down below on your thoughts on anything you've seen today and join me again for some more watch talk y'all take good care